Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here for or with EdJet Interactive. And tonight we're going to be talking about video, which is a little bit ironic because here I am on video and we're going to be talking about video. Uh, we're, our uh, guest tonight is Susie Lolly, who's with Kennedy State University, which I understand is the second biggest university in Georgia. Uh, so it's a pretty big deal. Uh, Susie trains teachers and she trains administrators. So uh, so this should be a really interesting talk. Um, and it's all, it's also interesting because we'd like to do these a little bit different from a typical webinar. Um, we like to have more interaction. So um, so I'm going to explain that in, in a second. But basically, what we'd like you to do is to participate, not just sit back and listen. Uh, it's going to be more like what you want your students to do. You want your students to participate in the class. You want them actively learning. You want them to reflect. It's the same thing here on EdChat Interactive. And we do that because we're using a package called Shindig, a platform called Shindig. And, Sh and Shindig has some features which no other platform has, at least that, that I'm aware of. Um, but uh, let me also let you know, we're doing a, a few more coming up in the next week. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to be having Matt Joseph, who's going to be talking about active learning strategies, similar to what we hope you're going to be doing tonight. And then on November 7th, we're going to be talking about uh, cybersecurity and digital citizenship. Uh, we want students to use the internet, but we also want them to be safe. So how can we keep students safe and informed uh, with Desiree Alexander? Desiree and Matt are featured speakers at FETC in January. So uh, they came to us from FETC and tonight's speaker uh, came from Boclips, which is one of the video solutions we're going to be talking about a little bit later. But first, let me talk a little bit about the Shindig platform. And let me expand this for a second. So hopefully you see this a little bit better. Uh, what you sh should generally see on your screen is something that you see on uh, where these uh, slides are. And you see the video avatars of the other people who are here. And you see your video avatar around your video avatar is a menu. Uh, all the way on the left is a menu that looks like quotation marks. Uh, that's your text chat. That's how you can communicate with each other. And in fact, that's how you can communicate with Susie. Uh, I'd like you to, to click on the text chat for a second. When you click on it, and let me shrink this again. Uh, when you shrink it, then the screen's gonna change. It's gonna look like it does here. And it's going to open up a text box. In that text box, I'd like you to introduce yourself. And maybe you can tell Susie something that you'd like to learn tonight. Uh, you know, why, why are you here? What is it that you want to get out of tonight's session? Um, the only person who can't see that is me. Uh, but Susie can see it, and you each can see it. And as a matter of fact, if somebody types something in and you have something to add, why don't you comment? And uh, that's your first type of interaction is typing in through the text chat. When you're done, if you want to shrink that window, you can click on that text icon again. to me, which I can then send to Susie, or if it's something technical, I can answer it myself. So uh, so the second way of interacting is by clicking ask a question. The third way of interacting is is coming up here on the stage. If you click on your the raise hand button, that lets me see that you're interested in coming up on stage, and then I can bring you up on stage to talk directly to Susie. And the final way of
I've had some uh, connection problems right now, uh, but I'm back. <laughs> so let me just go through the final way of interacting is to click on the avatar of another person. And when you do that, uh, what you'll get, a, a it'll look something like it does here on the screen where you're connected to another person and you'll be able to talk. Uh, and we're going to ask you to do that a couple times during the session tonight because we'll, we'll you to we'll ask a question we'll ask you to break into small groups and discuss the question before that happens i'll pop up on stage and i'll explain what we're supposed to do so let me uh move on and bring susie up uh let me see if if i can find her uh bethany him uh there she is okay and let me bring susie up on stage And there you are. Hey. We can hear you now. You're up. You're up. So, um, uh, so well, welcome to welcome to Shindig. And uh, did you did you teach today? Were you were you teaching um, today? I or? was with. Uh, let's see. What did I do today? I did a lot of observations in kindergarten, fourth, and fifth grade today. So I'm worn out. <laughs> but, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I teach teachers, but a lot of times in the context of their classroom. So speaking of FETC and the great folks in Florida, we use the TEMO, which is the technology integration matrix observation. And so that's what I was doing today. So. Ah, so yeah, that does take a lot out of you. <laughs> so, and everybody's saying, okay. why are you in my classroom? Well, I'm really excited to be here tonight, Mitch, and it is my first shindig, but everybody, just so you don't panic, it's not my first webinar. Uh, so if I mm -hmm. click a wrong button, which I guarantee will happen, Mitch is here to bail me out. And if I don't know any answers about bow clips, I have Bethany and Bethany's friend. What was Bethany's friend's name? Let me look. She, she introduced herself a minute ago. Now I can't find it. But anyway, so Bethany and Bethany's friend, we have you here from bow clips. And in case at the end we have any specific questions, I'm going to let you jump up on stage and handle those. So, hey, everybody, before I really talk to you about myself, I want to talk to you about the topic because it's a little bit of, let's just say, clickbait. I'm being honest. When you see the word transform, you're thinking, OK, Susie, transformative like video is so old. So I'm just going to say maybe that was too strong of a word. But I will say that when we think of transform, we think of something that it implies something new and sparkly and shiny. But I don't know about you, but sometimes the old reliable things are the things that work best. And so tonight, I just want to give you a reminder or a spark or, oh, I, I did have video in my back pocket and a few ways to use it that maybe you haven't or some reminders of ways you have. And what I love about the Shindig platform is that I'm going to then ask you, you know, out loud, it's really cool. I'm going to ask you on here, you know, what are other ideas you'd like to contribute? So we have several goals tonight, but they're really simple. Number one, I'm going to tell you five reasons video is still the bomb diggity. Yes, I did say that cheesy word. I'm going to share five creative videos that uh, were from my high school teaching days. I did teach middle school as well. And then I'm also at the very end going to introduce a new video source. If you're looking for some ready made video resources that you can just pull on any subject. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, Mitch, will you change the slide for me? And I don't know if it's delayed at all. So I'll just tell jokes, sing in between. I really can't tell, you know, if you guys are seeing the same thing I'm seeing. There we go. So this is a big face of me. And then you can see my little face in the. Looks like I was turned off for a minute. So I just want to make sure you heard what I said. So um, I. I could tell you things I've done and, and been, but I'm not into that. I try to be a humble girl. We Southerners take take pride in our humility. <laughs> uh, I'm just joking about that. But anyway, I do want to tell you that I am a real living, surviving high school and middle school English teacher. I taught eighth grade and up for 11 years. Most recently, I taught ninth and 11th grade. So ninth grade actually were my favorite. So if you're a fellow high school teacher, you can tell me if you can't stand um, ninth graders or you love them. I think you're either in one camp or the other. Um, I want to tell you also that I've been a, a tech coach for about five years, but most recently have gone to, like Mitch said, Kennesaw State University. I kind of left in the very beginning of the year, jumped ship and came over to Kennesaw State. So I'm really excited, but I want you to know this, that everything I'm saying is from a very sharp memory 
of what it was like to be in a real classroom. I don't forget that for one day. I think anybody who's in any kind of leadership position, whether it's coaching, administration, anything where we where we um, pride ourselves in saying, this is how I would do it. We need to remember what it's really like to be in a classroom. So tonight I'm going to show you real classroom projects. They're not polished, but I thought they were kind of funny. Going back and watching my students' videos, uh, these are all from like 2012, really did make me laugh. So I hope that they'll make you laugh too tonight. Um, I love to travel all over when I can, aka when people will pay for it. <laughs> so um, I've been to Portland and Denver and Austin and Massachusetts. And if you're from anywhere besides the South, you will get a kick out of my Georgia accent, just like the people in Boston did. Um, I love to share every trick I know for making teachers feel like they have the tools and the power and the confidence to be able to stay in the classroom. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So there are three approaches to video, and those are not going to be the five tips I'm going to share with you tonight. But as I was thinking about, you know, how do we categorize how we use video in the classroom? I thought of three ways. I made this up totally off the top of my head. So when we do our breakout, it's not about this topic, but I'd love to hear if you have some better vocabulary to put around my terms. So number one, I thought of receptive. OK, you remember this. If you ever had I'm sorry if you're a high school football coach, I'm just going to say it. But if you ever had a high school football coach teaching you history or English or anything else, you know about receptive video. They put in a video in World War Two and you watched it for five days in class. <laughs> That's very receptive. You're you know, the teacher's presenting that sage on the stage and then I'm receiving. OK, um, if you um, have kids, on the other hand, producing something, which is what I'm going to show you in a minute, then you're they're using creatively. So we've got receptive, we've got creative. And then my third term that I coined is receptive plus. So I'm going to mention tonight how my students were able to take the videos they made and also give the ones who were watching those videos kind of an interactive component. Okay, next slide, please, Mitch. I feel like I'm on a game show here. <laughs> so let's talk about transformation number one that you're going to do if you're allowing students to make videos in your classroom. I want you to, first of all, picture this. Okay, you're in high school English class. You're reading the classics, Charles Dickens, Mark Twain. Are you throwing up in your mouth right now just mention, just with me mentioning that? I mean, I get sheer joy out of Dickens and Twain. But if you're like, oh, my gosh, Susie, don't take me back there, then you're my kind of person. So some of my students, most of my students, when they encountered Mark Twain, Charles Dickens, they also wanted to throw up in their mouths or fall asleep on the desk or ask me how this would relate to them. But you know what came, when they came alive? was when I gave them these goofy video projects to do. Now they seem goofy and you'll see in just a minute, great expectations. You guys might recognize the song. They got a kick out of it. I do not recognize it. But anyway, um, when they when it came time for them to produce videos, they got such a kick out of that and entertained me to no end. It was much better than me reading an interpretive analysis essay. Although we did those kind of things too. I want to give you one tip as you are actually I'm going to save it for in between the videos because we're going to show just every video I'm going to show tonight is just going to be 30 second clips. So don't feel like I'm going to bore you for a whole hour. But Mitch is going to get my first video ready. And then in between, I'll give you a little tip for introducing these kind of projects in your class. So Mitch, we're going to go with great expectations. Um, what is that mysterious ticking noise? It's kind of catchy. Pip, pip, pip. Now you might be thinking, Susie, what in the world? I'll talk about this video. Pat, can I get out of this Pat, stupid can chat? I get out of this stupid chat? Boy, you listen here. I paid Boy, good money for this now. You stay here, you hear? I'm going to go get me some more whiskey. Yes, sir. I can cut a good old hole in this there wall and get out of this old crap shack. This looks like a good place to let the crowds pass. Whoa, who be stepping out there? Boy, I think the video is playing good. twice. Can you guys see me? Hear me? I'm going to go get me some more whiskey. Yes, sir. 
Okay. I can cut a good old hole in this there wall and get out of this old crap shack. Okay. I, the video kept playing over and over. You can cut that video, Mitch. Like a good place to let... That's fine. I think it played twice. So you might be thinking, Susie, did you have any purpose to your videos? Yes. And if I could show you the whole thing, you would know the purpose, but you'll just have to trust me. So I wanted to give you guys this tip. If you, if we're trying to transform video by allowing kids to have creativity and we tell them everything to do, we show them an example, we give them very prescriptive on slide one, do this. Y'all, I gave very, I gave hardly any directions. Now I did say what the requirement was. So just so you know, for the first one, um, great expectations was pretty challenging, even for my honors kids. And so for the first, I think it was maybe 10 chapters. I assigned every little group one chapter to recap. And so you just saw the song at the beginning, which they got a kick out of, but then they proceed to take those characters and recap the chapter. Um, I didn't say, please use popsicle sticks. Please make these puppets. The other video you saw, which was Huck Finn, um, those were 11th graders. And um, I just love that 11th graders almost have that story time mindset too. They still like it. And so again, I didn't say what they had to do. Some people uh, filmed like a live action video. Some did where you draw on a whiteboard and then speed it up. I had several people do that. Um, but I really gave them the freedom to say, this is the content I want you to cover. In that second one, it was, I want you to recap all of Huck Finn in four minutes. So it made it kind of funny, but also really accessible if they could pick something out of every chapter. So my tip is if you make it so restrictive, you're not letting them be creative. I will share if you're interested at the very end, I'll give you my contact information and I'm happy to share uh, rubrics that I did along with these projects. If there's something that you would like to repeat in your class or you're just like, Susie, I don't believe that that was a real project, <laughs> then I could definitely show you what we did. Um, so I want to go now to our first breakout session. This is exciting because like I said, I've never done a shindig. So we're going to join groups and what you're going to do, I see a, two gray faced people and a black square. So we're going to join them. And then I guess we can just hear their voices. if <laughs> We can't see their faces. But what I want you to do is form a group of two or three. And I want you to discuss this question up by the paintbrushes. I want you to share a creative idea that you or your students have expressed with videos. So maybe you're in grad school and you're having to make videos yourself, something you've done in school or, or had your students do, or if you've never done that, what's an idea of something you could do? So I want you to go ahead and tap a group and join that small group. And Mitch, all I right. can tap a group yep. and join in, all right? Yep, I'm gonna bring you right down now. Okay. okay, so now Susie's down, so you could select her uh, to be in your group and form two people and if you don't have a video camera, but you do have a microphone, you can still click on somebody and talk. Um, if you don't have a microphone, uh, remember next to your avatar is a quote um, box in, in the menu. And if you click on that, you can type into the text chat uh, an example of students with video, and then you can comment on other people. So I'm going to bring myself down and uh, we'll come back up in a minute. Okay, so Susie, I hope you're ready. I'm going to bring you up now also. And here she comes.
So I'm going to share an example. So there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so my daughter, when she was in sixth grade, uh, she'd done a product project on the Iditarod and she got a B on the project and she was really upset. So she went to the teacher and she says, I'll tell you what, if I could get Susan Butcher to do a video for me, would you give me an A? And so the teacher said yes. So my daughter got pictures of Susan Butcher at different when, when she's winning her different awards and she, you know, she took pictures of the video of the, of, you know, a video of the pictures and she, her voice was in the background saying, hi, I'm Susan Butcher. I'm here for Rosie Weisberg. I just want you to know that I think that she should have gotten an A on her project. And in order to do that, I'm allowing myself to be interviewed by, by Rosie. So my daughter Rosie would ask a question and then she would answer it as if she were Susan Butcher. And then she gave the video to her teacher and the teacher um, basically said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you an A minus because I have a little bit of a doubt that that was really Susan Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> but your creativity overwhelms me. Yeah. <laughs> so so I thought, Mitch, I I'm really curious about the hand raising thing. So do any of you that were in the other group, I know Jessica and I had a good chat, but she's not been a teacher. So we weren't able to come up with anything she did in the classroom, but anybody in the other group want to raise a hand and share something you came up with? Yeah, maybe, uh, Tim, if you want to come up, can you click on that raise hand button and I can bring you up and discuss or, um, or Bethany? Just yes. I didn't okay. Want to come so up, but I will. <laughs> okay. So here's, so yeah, uh, let me bring Tim up and I'm going to, uh, bring him up into a new pod here. And here he comes. Uh, so Tim, thank you for coming up and I'll let you, yep. I'll let the two of you talk. Okay. Um, well, uh, so so the idea that, that I did, uh, so I was a special education teacher and we taught um, severe and profound students, um, oh, wow. mostly autistic. And um, so we, we did a lot of video sharing with parents just because uh, our students, of course, couldn't tell them how their day was. But one big project we did was our school had a science night and we were required to participate in it. And so it was where the parents would come in and, and do science experiments with their students. And since that wasn't relevant to us, um, we put together a half an hour long video and short movie of a day in the life of our students. So the parents could actually see um, the, what the students did throughout the day. Because again, like I said, they they really don't didn't have any idea what went on during the school day. Um, and so we shared that at our science night instead of doing something irrelevant for our students. Well, you just blew me out of the water, Tim. So <laughs> drop the mic. Tim's in charge from now on. <laughs> so, what a great idea. I love that. And I love if you, I don't know if you guys have heard of Seesaw, but that's a great way yep. to share. I know it's a really popular tool, but um, I see a lot of teachers of severe, profound, autistic, you know, because it's got the privacy component with, you know, just that one parent seeing that one kid's stuff, but they can right. do a lot of like video documentary during the day. So good idea. Thanks for sharing that. Right. Sure. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and move on to transformation number two, or slight shift number two, but that wouldn't have made an exciting topic, an exciting title. Everybody's connecting. Everybody's connecting for the weekend. Musical interlude during technology difficulties. And we're back. So I want to go ahead and talk about transformation number two, which is to cover rote learning in a fun way. So I want you to go back to English class with me. And if y'all saw my notes, I just wanted to give you, since it's just a little informal group here, my sister-in-law was very stressed out by how I wrote my notes. But anyway, stream of consciousness. But I want you to go back to English class with me. And I want you to think about, um, you know, I moved from middle school to high school. And instead of just reading, which was a nice manageable topic to cover in 50 minutes. I now had to teach reading, writing, vocab, grammar, 
I didn't really teach spelling in the high school. I don't know. It's it was kind of a lost cause at that point or I just ran out of time to teach it. I wish that I could have addressed that. It drove me crazy. But I had to do all of that. Plus, and I don't want you to think Susie's pie in the sky. You know, I know that Tim said he taught severe and profound. I'd never taught that level, but I have taught special ed all the way up to honors. And so in this case, the year that these videos were made, I had so much pressure on me from parents. There were high expectations, plus trying to fit in all of this content that just there's no way to make it fit in 50 minutes. So that's where videos came into play. So I'm going to show you a, a few more videos. There are three more. Um, and I want to kind of introduce those as he before he gets them up there. So number one was a grammar project. Um, I had to teach grammar, but unless you are me and you love grammar, I don't know if there's anybody else. You can give me a shout out in the chat here if you're like, yes, grammar is my thing because I really get a kick out of it. Um, but most kids do not. And so what I did was I took the grammar book, boring as it may be, and I picked out all the high frequency topics where I'm like, OK, this is something that if they don't know it, their writing is going to be affected. And I assigned different topics to the same class. But here's my tip. I took I had three honors classes that year. If you give the same project to three groups of kids, one of them will turn out good. OK, and then you can use that project from year to year. Or in my case, I showed it with my on level classes. So even though the honors kids did the grammar videos, I was showing them also in my regular ed on level classes. So if you assign the same topic, for example, semicolons, you're going to get one great video. And y'all tonight, I wish you could see the whole video. I'm not showing it, but um, you're going to love Krabby Joe. OK, you're going to meet him in just a minute or you're showing mod or you're teaching modifiers. If you have three groups attack that again, you're going to get one good project. You're going to see the tin foil boy in just a minute. These are my favorite that we're coming up to. The other topic that I did that was kind of rote learning that was transformed by video was um, vocabulary. So vocabulary, really, I don't care if you like vocabulary or not. It is a necessary evil in every subject. I mean, think how much vocabulary is in math or science or social studies. So you could just put up a word wall. OK, you could just go point to the word wall, which I've seen teachers do. But my students created we did a New York Times daily double. So we did two words a day from the New York Times word of the day. And uh, I had them I assigned them in chunks of 10. So two partners created a daily double video. So what you're about to watch is um, three little segments from my grammar and my vocabulary videos. So here goes. I don't do awkward silence, so I apologize. I sing or tell jokes, and I can't think of any jokes. Right I think it's coming. So I tried playing the semicolon one, but somehow or other it didn't play. So I'm going to move on to Caitlin. Okay, then okay. I owe you guys Krabby, uh, Krabby Joe. Okay, I'll have to send you that okay. one later. Yeah, I'm sorry, but let me let me try Caitlin. I hope I hope one of these work because they're funny. Misplaced modifiers are placed too far from the subject they're meant to modify, which can result in a sentence sounding confusing or unintentionally humorous. See what happens. Hey, what's going on over there? I don't really know. Some lady is handing out brownies to children wrapped in tinfoil. What? What? You don't see brownies? No. See, what should have been said is, a lady is giving out brownies wrapped in tinfoil to, to children. It cut off at the very end. And then I've got one more if the if the semicolons one wouldn't play. Okay, while we're waiting, I'm on your guys. All right, time for you to try my latest creation. What is it? Oh, it's made of all my favorite foods: maple syrup and pumpkin and tuna fish. All in one. Sounds delicious. It is. It's very good. It's delicious. I know, right? You're wincing because it's so good. Yeah, I'm not because it's disgusting. Mm, that's exactly 
All right. <laughs> so I could have just said, guys, here's a list of vocabulary words, which is exactly what we did in elementary, if you, I mean, middle school, if you guys remember vocabulary workshop. And sadly, my on-level kids had to do that too. I wasn't in charge of their vocabulary program. But I could have just given them a list of words, memorized these. We all could do that. We're not really learning them. But I love that maybe they didn't remember everybody else's words, but they were able to learn the words that they did. So I want to give you a couple tips here. Number one, if we're talking about transforming your classroom, just assigning them videos is um, probably not enough choice. So I know we're in a culture of personalizing learning and choice and voice. So I think even their topic and their due date should be something they can choose. So what I did was I wrote down all the topics that I wanted them to present or all the groups of words. And you didn't, I didn't have to sign them up for anything. The stressors who like to get it over with took care of the early dates. The slackers took the late dates and I wasn't responsible. So if they're like, you made us present early and that's why we failed. They picked their own dates. They picked their own partners. So I think that's really key also if you're going to use video in the classroom. So number uh, actually we're going to do another breakout session this will be our last breakout session and so that's on the next slide and so now that you've seen some examples what is some rote learning I know not everybody here was a teacher but what is something that was so boring it was just memory that could have been more powerful had your teacher allowed you to access it via video or what's something that you have addressed in your class that would have been considered rote learning with video so take let's just do one minute because um, I know our connection issues have slowed us down a little bit. So um, let's just take one minute, jump in a group with somebody and maybe jump up with somebody, get in a group with somebody different and uh, see what we can see. Okay. And I'll bring you down so you can join a group and uh, we'll be back up in a minute or so. Okay, so I'm going to bring uh, Susie up also. You know, that was a quick minute, right? <laughs> it was a quick minute. Um, I'm going to let Bethany share because I was in the middle of hearing her idea when you brought me back on the stage, which is good. I uh, teleported. So let's have okay. Bethany come up on the stage. Tim, can you hear me? Wave if you can hear me. Hmm. Well, there's say they're still connecting, but the example I was just sharing with Susie was regarding the Spanish alphabet, and it could just be rote memorization. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, I, I see that they can hear me. So it could just be rote memorization going through the Spanish alphabet, but um, putting that to a video or a song um, on a video is something I've seen that has been very successful in getting that Spanish alphabet memorized.
Anna. Yes, I just, I, I was frozen. Okay, well, I'm going to buzz through. I, Bethany shared while we were disconnected. So I'm going to buzz through um, the remaining transformations. We're going to be transformed, but in a shorter time frame. Okay, <laughs> so here's the news, guys. Yes, here's a news flash. Most students over the age of six do not care what a teacher thinks about their work. Okay, so maybe I'm being harsh in saying six. Some of you have children older than that that still are teachers' pets and they should rock on and be teachers one day, just like I was. I was the one who still cared and liked the teacher. But after a certain age, um, you know, and I know this from being an English teacher, I would write all these comments. I would just take so long writing carefully crafted comments. They looked at the grade, they said yay or nay, and they threw it in the trash can. Okay, so at a certain point, all the comments a teacher can make, all the grades a teacher can give are going to not amount to much. And also we're in a social media culture for better or for worse. And so kids are used to likes and hearts and applause and look at me. And they want some authenticity, but not from us. They want that authentic approval from their peers. So if you'll go to the next slide, Mitch. So we did have super, we did have super, we did have social media when I was teaching. I just was last in the classroom six years ago. Um, we did have social media, but we it wasn't as popular. You know, some kids were on Twitter. Not everybody was. Facebook was pretty much the only thing out there. And um, so at that time, I was using polls to allow my students to put their work out there for a greater audience and kind of motivate them to give me a better product. So if you'll see the video you didn't get to watch, which was honestly my favorite, that's okay. I'll share at the end if you tweet me. Um, but you can see Sarah and Lillian blew it out of the water with these videos. And then Leslie and Francesca did theirs to the tune of Mr. Sandman. So I've got that one too available. But um, anyway, I had the kids not just make the videos for me, not just make the videos so that their friends could learn grammar or vocabulary or whatever it was, but I had them make the videos um, also for this audience where if they wanted votes, they could share the video with their parents, their parents, friends, whoever it was. I know some of them, like the parents got really excited and shared it out a lot. And then I just put up a simple little poll daddy poll. That's a really old tool. That's not what I would use today. But anyway, I just wanted you to see, I'm not making this stuff up. Those are real videos. These are real results of how the kids voted in my classroom. And um, what I did was I created the Lolly's Red Carpet Awards. So the students won, one of our partners in education donated a trophy and they won a trophy and they also won a prize pack if they were the winners for this particular group. So two things came out of that. I got good products and they got recognition from an audience they valued. So it was definitely a win-win. Okay. So um, I did have another breakout, but I, I think we'll just... Um, do this in the chat. Let's do a chat breakout if we can. So just beside your name, you can answer this question. So how have you or how can you allow student video to reach a wider audience? So I know we definitely have student privacy, student data concerns, and I do want to take this opportunity to mention all the people in my videos are now adults. I'm Facebook friends with several of them, so I'm not showing anything of a minor. And when these were listed, on my YouTube channel, they were listed via private link. So only the ones that they chose to share with would be able to see those videos. So just in the chat, you can tell me, you know, how have you allowed student video to, or even if, you, if you're like, Susie, I'm here to learn about video, then how have you used just student products in a way that they would reach a greater audience? So I know Tim shared a little bit about that, but if you have anything else to say, go ahead and put that in the chat. And we'll take 35 seconds. We need a song about talking or waiting or something. I don't know. I don't know one, y'all. I'm drawing a blank and I thought I knew every song in the world. I already sang the Jeopardy song, so. Okay. I don't think, I can't tell if maybe I'm missing. Oh, there we, they are. Okay. I just couldn't see them. March is reading month, flash mob. <laughs> That's so fun. And then videos for parents at IEP meetings, baseline to completed goal. Very cool. So it's not just telling them they did this thing, which sometimes I think people can be distrustful of, but it's giving them, you know, a real practical view of that. Okay, so let's go ahead to transformation number four, Mitch. Mitch, take it away. There we go. So number four is going to be, you've got to make sure your curriculum is content aligned. So I just went... Um, no, I want you to, I keep saying picture this. I want you to picture if you've ever taught high school or been in high school, which I would assume applies to all of us in some way. Um, the last few weeks of either semester in high school, you have people showing movies. 
I'm still teaching postmodernism and trying to get my kids to understand, you know, the, the concept of postmodernism in English class. And then in other classes, they are watching whole movies, Disney movies, not related movies. You know, it's not like we're in, you know, I'm teaching history through film and watching Shawshank Redemption. No, it's it's like, you know, Disney, the Little Mermaid kind of thing. It was really hard to maintain focus in my class when they were acting like buffoons in the other classes. So, and I just went to model. I was a, a trainer in a district for 15 years. I've just moved over um, to another place. But I just went to teach this year um, Canvas Learning Management System at one of my high schools. And the kids were actually so excited that I was there. It was one of those um, days when some kids left early for final exams, but then there were the kids who didn't have a ride or their parents made them stay at school, which could have been a terrible day. I was in there with a bunch. It was an all boys class and I was in physics and the teacher pretty much gave me a free reign of what we were going to do. So she and I co-planned a lesson and they were so excited to label the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Because in their other class, they were watching Mama Mia. It was, and it was a math class. This was nothing to do with anything. So I say that to say that videos must be good. They must be interesting, but they have to have some kind of an activity or an expectation attached. Uh, the kids don't even want their time wasted. Maybe little kids are like, let me watch a movie. You know, it's almost nap time. But big kids, uh, elementary age on up, they don't want their time wasted. So if you're going to do video, it needs to be related to a curriculum standard. Um, and I want to mention also that the grammar videos that we did, I had my students um, create a worksheet or an activity. Nowadays, I would have done something jazzier, but it's been six years and we were a little bit of a less technology school. Um, and so they created like an accompanying graphic organizer worksheet that the kids could do to make sure they had notes on what they were supposed to learn from the video. So you got to have something that's going to align that to curriculum. So my next slide, there is actually a brand new resource out. And Bethany's right here in the chat. Um, she knows a lot more about it than I do, but there's a new resource called Bow Clips. It's been in the UK. Um, if I'm correct, Bethany, you, you clarify if I'm not, you can nod your head. Um, but it's it's actually been like a business to business video service where maybe I'm writing a textbook. I need some videos. <clears throat> you, They would give me a license to put that video in my digital textbook or something. Well, they're just delving into teacher and school focused curated collections. So bow clips, you can see a little screenshot here, but if you're trying to have video that's aligned to curriculum standards, they have these collections that are really cool. This is a new feature since I first started exploring it with Bethany back in the summertime. So, you know, for example, you're teaching geography, you can go deep like that with a collection, or you can just type in a keyword. I typed in To Kill a Mockingbird. I found resources. I found interviews with Harper Lee. You know, it, it was a lot of stuff. So you shouldn't have time, have to waste time looking for videos. You need some kind of a curated collection. So Bow Clips is a source that is searchable, collaborative. You can add another teacher and you guys can make a, a project together. You can also develop playlists similar to what you do in YouTube. But on my next slide, I'm going to talk about why that's this is a better way. So stay there just a minute. But I want to that's OK. Um, but I do want to say that their education side, their teacher to teacher side is still developing. And Bethany can kind of give you more information about that as we go. So they've hooked up with several content partners, which are on this next slide. I just took a very small screenshot. You can only fit so much on a PowerPoint slide, but they've gone out to amazing content providers. As you can see, just right here in this slide, they've gone to the Associated Press. So they've got stuff from them. They've got stuff from Crash Course. People that all of us follow and love in the news media or in, um, you know, on YouTube, but better, okay? And Darn. Let's see if we can get Susie back up. Okay, you're back up. All right, I'll bring myself down. Sorry. Okay, I was just saying the third time's a charm, but apparently not, because that was the fourth time I've disconnected now. But I do want to say this. Nothing is for sale tonight. Tonight is not a sales call. It's more of an awareness campaign or a fact-finding mission that there's this new company out there that is providing more video resources than what we've had access to uh, previously and in a different format. So um, transformation number five is that we want to easily ensure that video is safe for students. So picture this. 
You're in an English classroom teaching ninth graders, immature ninth graders. Romeo and Juliet, you know the Zeffirelli version, the classic version? You know the naked butt scene? Well, Susie Lolly didn't know that was coming up, and so I dove ever so ungracefully in front of the screen to try to cover this up for my boys and girls who almost saw, you know, a whole nudity scene. It was not, not a good situation. So we have to easily make sure that video is safe for students. There are tools out there, but a lot of them are blocked uh, or a lot of them you have to, you know, different, you know, make different things happen, embed this code, do this. So if YouTube has playlists and I could just make my own collections, you're like, okay, Susie, why do I need somebody else's collections? I could just go on YouTube. I think we can think of several reasons, suggested videos, ads, um, and not everything you need on YouTube. Believe it or not, not everything's been made by a 15 year old who started his YouTube channel. So lots of reasons why YouTube isn't going to be the best source. So um, I want to let you know again, next slide, that bow clips is very easy to search. I told you there's a little search bar. I just typed in to kill a mockingbird, not knowing if anything would pull up because I've really only been on the site a few times since Bethany introduced me to it. Um, but it's very easy to search. It comes with ad free and we all need that in our Sue happy students want to take a video of the teacher and turn it in society. OK, can I get a witness? So um, I want to review the five transformations that video can make in your classroom. And then I want to just give you my contact information, see what questions you have, what thoughts you have. And then, like I said, if Bethany needs to clarify anything. So the five ways video can transform, shift, move your classroom, make your classroom more engaging. Number one, it allows students to be more creative. Number two, it makes rote content more interesting. Number three, videos can be pushed to an authentic audience. Number four, you can easily make curriculum alignments and you should. And number five, you can easily make sure your videos are safe and you should. So the last slide here is just my contact information. I keep it really simple. SusieLolly.com. Susie Lolly on Twitter. Um, you cannot contact me at BowClips.com, but I did want you to make sure you had that website. And Bethany, like I said, if she wants to come on stage in a minute, um, can share any more information if there's somebody who has a question. Um, you can also watch, I've created 30 something videos on Tech Tuesdays at facebook.com slash techlolly. So, and I'm founding, I'm putting some of those and making a new YouTube channel. So if you want to get in touch with me, you can. If I get on your nerves, guess what? I'm done talking. So if there are any questions that I can answer for you about my video projects, how I used video in the classroom, or any questions that someone else can answer for you, you'll just put your hand up by clicking the little hand icon at the very bottom. So do you get any uh, flack from any anybody in administration when you try to use video in, in your class? I think there has to be a permission process in place. And that's mm -hmm. both for what I called receptive video, just showing videos. You have to get I don't know any administrator nowadays that just says, sure, go play that video for, for a week, um, mm -hmm. which we do in high school all the time. So there's permission both for showing videos. We had to tell we had to really justify ourselves at the last high school I was at. This is the video I want to show. This is why I want to show it and get permission. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it was something that was available on a platform, like they had to know. But then as far as students participating in videos, yes, I did have a permission form that I sent home, similar to what you would do for allowing them to be photographed. Okay. Um, so uh, Tim put his hand up, so I'm going to assume that he would like to come up. So let me put him in up and let's just let me just remind uh, let people know that if they're here, if they registered for uh, this EdShed Interactive, then uh, they can get access to bow clips um, and uh, we'll send an email out to everybody who registered to let them know how. Uh, so, Tim, did you have a. Would you, uh, Just you, a quick you, question. What's your favorite tool for, or what, what have you seen used for um, Chromebooks um, for student editing videos? And then you personally, what's your favorite um, program to edit videos? Can I first of all say that I just got stuck with a Chromebook in the last few weeks and <laughs> I appreciate the gesture, <laughs> but I'm not a huge fan of editing video online. But if I had to pick one, I've seen Wii Video be pretty user friendly as far as if you need in browser editing. Um, obviously, Screencastify is a really easy one for um, webcam type stuff. However, if you're trying to, as I was, I, the reason we had trouble with one of my videos is tonight is because I had to send it through to three different people through the down the yellow brick road. Um, but what I don't like about Screencastify is that it does not allow you to select a portion of the screen to record, um, right. which was 
you know, so I like Screencastify because uh, of the free version. I like Weave Video. It does have a free version. I think you can maybe do three videos or something um, as far as browser editing. But my favorite video editor, and it's going to sound really silly, is the PowerPoint recording tab. Um, it used to be known as Office Mix. If I could have a funeral for Office Mix, I would because it broke my heart when they died. <laughs> But Microsoft just was not seeing the usage that they could have gotten out of it. So they dropped it. However, if you will, um, if if teachers and students have any um, email account that is that ends in um, like a school email account. So dot org, dot edu, whatever, if you're mm -hmm. in a public school or private, as long as it's that um, you can get Office 365 for free. And that means you can download Office 365, the programs onto your computer, which means that you can customize your PowerPoint ribbon to include recording. And that does the most robust, amazing videos to me, screen annotation, um, voiceover and, you know, screen recording. So that's my favorite if I had to pick. Okay. Yeah. And what do you use? Tim, what do you use? Um, well, oh no. He, he gets stuck. Boy, we're, um, we can't win for losing tonight. Uh, I'm going to bring him. I'm going to bring you down and then I'll bring you. Here we go. Can you oh, hear there me? You go. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, so yes. I use uh, iMovie on my Mac. Um, and then, but all of the school districts that I'm working with now, um, cause I do similar things to you as I go around and train teachers and, um, stuff, that, but they're all almost all Chromebooks. And so, um, you know, I have found a couple things on online, but nothing that I, nothing real robust just because it all has to be in the browser so i know so you can record your whole ugly window which was going to be one of my options to get the videos here for tonight but bethany graciously mm -hmm. saved my behind but yeah i haven't found yeah. anything great I, I wish i could say more but we video is one worth checking out and i okay. have time for maybe a couple more questions i'm in a i'm in a borrowed facility tonight so i told him i'd be off by nine o'clock oh <laughs> but, okay um, anybody else have a good question or anything you want to share Teach me something. And do you, uh, by any chance, are you going to be at FETC? They rejected me. Oh, no. How could they do that? I don't must, know. Must, you know something? I got it. It's your accent. You know something? If you, if you learned the New York accent, then maybe they would accept you. Can I tell you, though, that when I went to Boston, I had women follow me from, first of all, I got to present in the Pat Stadium, which was, I don't even like football, but wow. that was very exciting. I was in a box seat at the Pat Stadium presenting. Um, but women followed me from my session into the next person session, and I saw them standing around me, and I thought, what do y'all need? They said, we just love hearing you talk. So I really feel like my accent's an advantage. I'm just going to, and, and this high hair, you know, the higher the hair, the closer to God. That's what we say in Georgia. I, I wouldn't know that. Um, I, I can't get my hair that high. Uh -huh. Well, okay. So personally for me, it was, you know, like, yes, I, I, I like your accent, but um, it's the fact that you know so much and you communicate it so well. Well, I appreciate um, so that. All your friends at FATC, they made a mistake. <laughs> I think so. I think they did. Okay. Well, um, well, thank you for coming here, and I want to thank Bow Clips for, um, you know, for introducing us, and yes. uh, we'll, we'll we'll let everybody know, and uh, hope to see you um, either at a conference or online. Uh, but Susie, thank you, thank you very much. I'll be at. You can catch me live this year at NCCE, and hopefully with Bethany's help at ISTE in Philadelphia. So um, I've got a couple sessions in there and then also at NCCE in Seattle. So if you're either of those ah. places, that would be. So. Okay, well, I'll definitely be at ISTE in Philadelphia. Okay. okay. Well, take All right. Pam, you win most, most enthusiastic participant, okay? We're gonna send oh, you a certificate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, Have a good all right. All right, and Bye. this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm going to sign off for EdChat Interactive. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and uh, whether you're joining us live or you're joining us on the archive, and hope to see you at a future event. Good night.